Good day everyone, this is Genevieve T. Abelia. Today I will be going to discuss the Hotel Rwanda movie in Africa. And now, let's have the plot of the movie, which is the Hotel Rwanda. Hotel Rwanda was directed by Irish filmmaker Terry George depicts the brutality of the Rwandan genocide in real life event in 1994. In Hotel Rwanda, the Tutsis or the minority group are represented as victims and the Hutus are the a majority group as savages. This movie tells the true story of a one man's courage in the midst of this genocide. This movie mainly focuses on the life of a man, Paul Rosisa Bagina, who uses his skills as a businessman and his love of family to save the lives of 1.268 people during the Rwandan genocide. This movie also shows how UN peacekeeping force led by Colonel Oliver are unable to take assertive actions against the Enter Hamwe or the Hoto paramilitary organization. And now let's have the summary. Genocide began in April of 1994 when the Hutus targeted Tutsis. 800,000 Tutsi killed in six weeks. It is 11% of total population and more than 1 million people killed within 100 days. Paul Ahutu is a hotel manager of four star hotel this Mill Collins in the capital city of Kigali. He is married to Atashana. A Totsi, he is a very successful businessman and does his job very well. In 1994, two tribes vied for powers in Rwanda, the Hutu, a majority group, and the Tutsi, a minority group. Tashana urges Paul to use his influence to help local Tutsis, who are being harassed and beaten with increasing frequency. But Paul will only use the political capital he's built up to help his own family if and when they need. On April 6, 1994, a plane carrying President Habyarimana, a Hutu, was shut down. Following that incident, the violence escalates and the Hutus begin their genocide of the Tutsis. And the European guests and staff at the hotel are flown out of the country and Paul is left in charge. He finds that his conscience won't allow him to watch at the innocent are slaughtered and before long, the hotel has become a well-appointed refugee camp. Later, he hides many Tutsi refugees and Hotos in the hotel he manages and bribes the businessman and general in order to save the refugees from the genocidal massacre underway. As the violence worsens, the UN withdraws most of its peacekeeping force leaving roughly 300 soldiers behind. The UN peacekeeping force led by Colonel Oliver who is horrified by the massacre but is unable to provide adequate protection for the refugees being housed in the hotel. Paul holds firm and through his connection, his guile and his courage, he manages to save not only himself and his family but also 1.268 million innocent refugees he sheltered. So, who's who in the film? The characters of the movie. Paul Rosisa Bagina is the manager of the Milkolins Hotel. He is a Hutu. Tashana is Paul's wife. She is a Totsi. They have three children. General Bizimungu is head of the Rwandan Armed Forces and George Rutaganda is a businessman and leader of an enter Hamwe militia group. Colonel Oliver is commander of the United Nations Peacekeeping Forces in Rwanda. And Jack Daglish is a journalist and photographer who documents the Rwandan genocide. Dube left and Rigor right both work at the Mills Collins Hotel. The cast in the movie Don Chidal as Paul Rusesa Bagina, Sophie Oconido as Tashana Rusesa Bagina, Joaquin Phonex as Chuck Daglish, Nick Nolte as Colonel Oliver, Dismond Dobe as Dobby, Hakim Kaskazim as George Rutaganda. Fana Mokwena as General Bizimongo, Liliti Kumalo as Fidens, David O'Hara as David, Tony 
Kugorji as Grigor, Cara Simor as Pat Archer, Antonio David Leon Links as Thomas Mirama, and Roberto Citran as Priest. My apology to the people whose names I misspelled. And now, let us proceed to the discussion questions. Number one. How did the conflict or war begin in the film? How is this connected to the real happenings? So, the genocide was set into motion by the death of Rwandan President Juvenal Habyarimana. On April 6, 1994, Habyarimana's plane was shot down by a mass missile or a known origin. Government-aligned forces used Hutu. Habyaramina's that as an excuse to begin a campaign of slaughter they had been planning for some time and the genocide began on April 7th, it went on for about 100 days. Briefly, the roots of the Rwandan genocide lie in the country's colonial legacy, misunderstanding of democracy and other indirect factors such as the working of the world market, massive poverty, class divisions within the Rwandan society, and the cynical indifference of the Western ruling classes. Number 2. To what degree do we witness the Rwandan genocide in the film? So, the Rwandan genocide is witnessed by its audience to the fullest degree in that all events are historically depicted and the horrors during this time seem to show the graphic images that were present in real life. However, the movie is partially fictional and dramatized for the Hollywood effect. The conflicts between Paul and his family didn't necessarily take place and provided an emotional trigger for viewers. Moreover, the violence that took place in Rwanda was was not fully represented for the mere fact that it was a very ghastly scene that even the Hollywood movie industry couldn't fully take on. Number 3. What do you think UN Colonel Oliver means when he says, We are peacekeepers, not peacemakers. Is there a difference? If so, what is it? If not, why does he say this? So. UN Colonel Oliver was ordered that troops were not to use weapons unless in self-defense. They are there to stabilize the situation without intervening. There is a difference between acting as a peacemaker and acting as a peacekeeper. A peacekeeper attempts to prevent fights, violence, and disputes, while a peacemaker is one who attempts to get them under control once they, they occur. Number 4 how is Paul able to convince General Bizimungu into helping him at the end? What does this say about how the outcomes of the war might have ended differently? So Paul convinces General Bizimungu by offering to get him supplies at the other hotel called the Diplomat. While they were there, Paul told the General that he was on the list of military criminals in America. He basically blackmailed him by saying that the general would be convicted of war crimes. The general replies by claiming that he did not commit the crimes that he is accused of. Without Paul's help, the general would most definitely continue to be on the list of America's military criminals based on his status in the Rwandan army. Paul would have the ability to tell the Americans that the general actually helped the refugees back at the hotel. This says that the general could, it, could have been bribed earlier to put an end to the war which would ultimately save hundreds of thousands of lives. Number 5. Rwanda was widely considered the most Christianized country in Africa. Close to 90% of Rwanda claimed to be Christians. How do you account for the genocide which occurred in light of this information? So, the genocide in Rwanda was not primarily due to religious conflict, although it could be attributed to be a minor cause of the big picture. The main factor that stimulated the Rwanda genocide was the ethnic conflict between the Tutsi and the Hutu tribes. However, it is known that 90% of the population was Hutu, which probably means that the majority of the Hutu made up the Christian population. Therefore, Religious beliefs could have played a part in why the Tutsi and Hutu could not maintain a peaceful environment. Differences between these ethnicities are attributes that contribute to the conflicts behind the genocide that took place. 
Number 6. Based on the end of the film, what might you speculate about Rwanda's future from the perspective of 1994? So, I believe that Rwanda's future based on the end of the film would be very depressing. The scars from this 100-day genocide would have to be healed and it would most likely to take a long time for this happen. A new government and stable military would have to be enforced. This would be very difficult because conflicts between the two tribes would have to be forgotten. A long road to a peaceful nation would be ahead of them. This would be especially difficult if they did not receive help from the Western world. In conclusion, Hotel Rwanda explores genocide, political corruption, and the repercussions of violence. This would be the end of my discussion. Thank you for listening and have a great day. God bless.